Hi everyone, and welcome to the Component Library series. Today, we're going to talk about Redis UI. These days, I see this showing up in a lot of different places as the fundamental design system and a component library that a lot of creators can build on top. One of the core values in Redis UI is a high level of built-in accessibility features. And this is extremely important to me as I have been advocating for accessibility on the web for a very long time. A little bit of an intro information. Radius UI started getting traction back in 2020 and was founded by a company called Modules with a Z at the end. Based on what I see on their website, they're trying to take on Figma by creating a design tool that runs on the web and powered by web components built in React, basically taking the process of design closer to the exact medium that they're going to be used in. I, however, on a daily basis, work with designers that work in Figma. So the Modules product is not entirely relevant to me. However, one of the things that they launched is Radix UI. So why am I excited about Radix UI? First of all, this is a low level component library. It is an NPM module that you can download, make a dependency in your project. It's built in React, so it's a set of React components. They are meant to be themed. Radix UI team have put a lot of emphasis on theming. So that theming is extremely straightforward and we will dive into theming as a part of this video. Unlike many other component libraries, Radix puts lots of emphasis on accessibility and composability so that these components can work effectively across multiple devices and assistive technology. As a part of the intro, let's highlight the key features of Radix UI. Number one is accessibility. It allows you to build applications that are accessible for all users. Customizability. These components are highly themable, which means you can bring your own look and feel and bring it closer to your brand without having to be locked in into a specific design system. Composability. Radix UI components are built to work well together, which means on a set of primitives and fundamentals, you can start building higher order components that meet the business need of your application. And the fourth is performance. This library is highly optimized for performance to increase the speed of your application. Radix UI is listing a few companies on their website as the ones that are currently using this component library in their live product. A few that I was really surprised to see but was very excited by are Vercel, Node.js, Superbase that I'm currently using for my site project, and Linear. And let's be honest, Linear is a pinnacle of clean and intuitive design. The impression I get comes from the extreme attention to detail, which Radix clearly plays a big part in. Let's break down Radix UI into what you will find once you take dependency on this library. Obviously, it's the primitives, a set of primitive components that you will need to build your application, such as buttons, input fields, popovers, dropdowns, menus, and so on and so forth. Radix also comes with an array of accessibility hooks, allowing you to make your app more accessible, as well as educating on how to do this well. Now, let's go through the installation steps. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to open the project folder and run npm install Radix UI React. The first dependency we're going to need is Radix UI themes. Despite the name of this dependency, it comes with a set of fundamental primitives like card or button. Let's take the simple homepage example and transform it with the help of Radix UI. I have a simple example. This is my side project. This is a personal trainer hub and I have entry points for an admin, a trainer, or an athlete. These are essentially three cards. I have already created a custom card that is a slightly styled diff component. I'm going to be replacing this card with a card that I get from the Radix UI themes library. The next step is going to be replacing the buttons. And while I'm making all these changes, you can notice that nothing's really changing on the right side. The reason for it is that I have skipped a couple of steps. The first step is actually to wrap my entire project in the theme provided by the Radix UI themes library. I'm going to do this now in my app file. I'm not customizing this theme just yet. And I'm also importing the styles. And voila, when the styles are imported, now I see the Radix UI treatment applied. It's important to know that under the hood, Radix UI is reliant on CSS and JS technology. This might be an important side note for those of you who are working with React 18 and server-side rendering. I will continue adding components from Radix UI themes. I am replacing a heading in this case, and I am also going to be replacing the P tag with the text component. 
I will be wrapping the heading and the text in a box container as well as adding a little image at the top of my card. Those images are coming from my mock data and they are individual for each card. Now let's take care about arranging these cards on a page. I'm going to be wrapping the entire card list in the grid container and let's play around with the column layout. I can start with the three columns. I will most likely want this to be based on a media query, but for now, let's just keep it at, at two columns and two cards per row. And to make these cards a little bit more appealing, I'm going to add a separator between the title and the description and the action button below. There goes the separator. I'm going to add a size to it. And it's that simple. Let's dive into the theming. Now I'm using this library for the first time. So I'm actually going to use a little trick for theming so I can automatically generate my theme based on all the options available. I'm going to add this theming panel to my project and select the theme that I want through a graphical user interface. I can see changes automatically show up on my page. Now I'm going to pick the color scheme that I like and copy theme with the button below. I'm going to paste this theme in my file and remove the theme panel. Now this is a great start. We can continue tweaking the theme as we move along. And that's a quick overview of Radix UI. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe and follow for more component library tips.